What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how I built this rustic modern looking shelf using only one 2x10 and three 1x10s, costing a total of $34. So the first thing I did was design the shelf in SketchUp. I actually went through a few different designs before I decided on the one that I liked. Since the 2x10s are 1.5 inches wide and the shelves are 3 quarter inches wide, I decided to play with those measurements. So all the shelves will stick out 3 quarters of an inch and the middle 3 shelves will recess into the sides using a 3 quarter inch groove. I think this gives the shelf a ton of character and makes it feel much more interesting looking than it would have if the front was just flush. Once the SketchUp was done I made a cut list then I headed out to the garage to begin the build. The first cut was right down the middle of the 2x10. This gave me two perfect 4 foot boards that would later become the sides of the shelf. The second cuts were cutting the 1x10s in half. They are about an inch shorter than 6 feet, so I made sure to measure all the boards to 3 feet on one side. This left me with 3 36 inch sections and 3 35 inch sections, which is perfectly fine because those 35 inch sections are going to end up being cut down to 34 and a half later to become the middle shelves. Next it was time to break out the table saw. I ripped the 2x10s down. They're actually 9 and a quarter inches wide, and I wanted them to be 8 and a half inches wide. Taking off the factory rounded corners of the 2x10 give the lumber a much cleaner look and I wanted there to be a 3 quarter inch difference between the width of the shelves and the sides to give it a bit more character. So I took off 3 eighths of an inch on one side, then set up the fence to 8.5 inches and ripped the other side. This left me with a board that was wider than 8.5 inches, which is a bit more than what I wanted. I must not have set up the fence exactly perfectly, but we can work with that. I'd rather cut off not enough than too much. I decided to leave it, taking off an eighth of an inch on a 4 foot board on a table saw can be dangerous. It would definitely not be noticeable in the finished product anyways. I then cut the 35 inch pieces that will make up the middle shelves down to 34 and a half inches. I cut the first one, then I decided to measure the next two and cut them down at the same time. This is something I'd never done before, but it worked out pretty well. Just triple check to make sure you've lined up everything and that everything is square before the cut. This gave me three shelves exactly the same size. I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're extremely confident with your skills. I'd also like to mention that you can make all these cuts with a circular saw. Just take your time, make sure your blade is square. Before the miter saw and table saw, all I had was a 6.5 inch Ryobi battery powered circular saw, which you'll see later. I like working in a clean garage, so after every phase of the build, I clean up after myself. With the garage being clean, I set up the two sides and cut the grooves that hold the three middle shelves in place. First, I clamp both pieces together. This allows me to cut a groove in both sides at once. That way, if I make a measurement error, it's duplicated and the shelf will at least stay level. I used a 3 quarter inch straight bit and my framing square as a guide for the rudder to slide on. I made the first cut at half the depth and then the second cut at the full 3 quarter inch. This worked out really well, but then I was afraid I wouldn't have the same depth for each cut if I did this method again, so I tried to do it all in one pass. This was a big mistake. I could hear the rudder whining, it didn't like it. I could see and smell the wood burning as well. Overall it did work, but if I had to do it again, I would have made all three cuts first at a half the depth, set the full depth, and made all three cuts again. Now there's nothing left to do but sand, stain, assemble, and clear coat. I sanded all sides of each piece with 80 grit and then 120 grit using my random orbit sander. I didn't go any higher because the instructions on the can of stain actually says to only go to 100 grit. Plus sanding is extremely tedious and time consuming. A poor sanding job does reveal itself once your piece of furniture is done. I definitely need to practice patience and make sure I work up to a much higher grit in the future. I then went ahead and put some of Varathane's Weatherwood Accelerator on it. I wanted something that was a little more rustic and not pine looking, so I figured I'd give it a shot. It ended up working really well. I applied one coat and it was light gray. So after the glue up, I decided to add a second coat. I should have done it right after the first one, but oh well, lessons learned. I coated the top, the bottom, and all the edges. I've heard that if you only coat one side, that can cause your board to warp. I do use painter's pyramids underneath the board, however since pine is soft, they leave a small dimple in the wood that's clearly visible in the finished product. Therefore I went with some cardboard circles I made out of a mac and cheese box. They basically serve the same purpose, elevating the wood with minimal contact on the bottom side. But there's more surface area contacting the wood so the weight of the wood is distributed on much more than four tiny little points, aka they don't dent the wood. This worked well, kind of. I forgot cardboard is quite absorbent and this was a water-based stain, so it ended up soaking up some of the stain leaving lighter colored circles, leading me to apply that second coat right after the glue up. Rinse and repeat with the size of the shelf, except I used Varathane's aged wood accelerator this time. 
It worked out even better. It came out in a nice dark tone, making it not at all obvious that it was pine. The next day, you can clearly see where the cardboard circles were. No worries though, as I was able to orient the board so those marks are just underneath the shelves, making them not visible in the final product. I did a dry test fit before the glue up and realized that these shelves were slightly too wide to fit into the grooves, by about a sixteenth of an inch or so. So I used my circular saw and squared up the blades with the groove. Then I made sure the blade was three quarter inches deep. I then used my speed square right next to the saw as a guide. I moved the speed square over about a sixteenth of an inch and cut. This gave me a perfectly straight cut, the same depth as my groove. I only cut the side of the groove that I wanted to be on top. That way the top of the groove would have a perfectly straight edge. Basically I'm hiding the little mistakes underneath the shelves where they can't be seen. For the glue up, I laid everything down on the floor. I glued and clamped the three middle shelves to the sides at the same time. Then I pre-drilled and screwed the bottom shelf in. This just saves me time from having to try to glue and clamp the bottom and top shelves at the same time. The screws will hold the wood in place while the glue dries, and the screw heads aren't visible from the bottom anyways. When you're doing a glue up, sometimes the wood can shift just a little bit. This mini shift isn't a big deal, I just grabbed a block of wood and a hammer, and I was able to tap the shelves until they were flush at the back. The next day the glue was dry. To protect the finish I added two coats of Minwax Polycrylic. This is currently my go-to finish. I use it on and over everything. You just need to make sure that the stain is completely dry before applying. I applied one coat and after two hours it was ready to sand and receive a second coat. I hand sanded with 220 grit, wiped off all the dust, and then added the second coat. Then I left it to dry for 24 hours. I purchased these three quarter round self-adhesive pads from Home Depot. You get eight for like two dollars. They're not necessarily made for furniture feet, so I don't really know how the adhesive would hold up over time. So to solve this, I added a very small dab of crazy glue. And with that, the shelf is done. I'm very happy with the way this shelf turned out. It was mostly unknown territory for me. But I'm very glad I did it. I learned a ton and I'll be able to use what I learned in future furniture projects. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.